How's it going everybody? My name is Josh, amateur radio call sign KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today we are going to take a look at the Yaesu FTM 6000, the new radio from Yaesu, which is a dual band analog only, so 2 meter, 70 centimeter mobile radio. Let's take a look. There have been a ton of talking points and discussions going on on the internet about the Yaesu FTM 6000, the one right here behind me. Let's cover the big issues right up front so you guys can get on with your, your day and your life if these are going to be major hurdles for you. The street price, the retail price for this radio is $319. I picked this radio up from Ham Radio Outlet. Uh, thanks so much for letting me borrow it, but I'll give you a little spoiler alert right up front. I'm probably going to buy this one and keep it for reasons, uh, actually one reason, which I will make very clear as we go, as we continue. The Yesu website notes this as well right up front. It says the FTM 6000 is a basic feature packed mobile transceiver employing a new operating interface, the easy to operate three interface. And it, it's a, it delivers reliable and stable 50 watts transmitter performance. Now the price of this radio at $319 at HRO makes people immediately look to a direct competitor, which is the ICOM 2730A, which is literally the radio I have right here. It's my primary FM simplex radio that I use in the shack. That's currently retailing for $279 at HRO, for instance, as well. So why would you pick the Yesu over the ICOM? Well, here's a really interesting kind of point that the Yesu comes with the mobile mounting bracket in the box and the extension cable so that you can separate the head unit from the body and mount the head unit sleekly on your dashboard. If you bought the mobile bracket and the extension kit, for the ICOM 2730, the price quickly swells up to over $300, making them almost the same price. Very interesting how that scales out at the end, but that's something to keep in mind right up front. People keep talking about the price. Why would you go with this over the ICOM? Price is kind of subjective, particularly if you're going to be putting this in your car because you're inevitably going to get a bracket or something along those lines as well. But if you're planning on scratch building a bracket or you have something else in mind or something you're going to reuse, then the ICOM is likely a cheaper option. I'm not trying to turn this into a review for the ICOM, but the ICOM is also dual watch, meaning you have two channels that you can monitor at any one time. The Yesu is single channel. It is a basic mobile radio. It, it has interesting features, which again, I'm going to get to it, I promise but not really the same kind of competitor against the 2730, which hopefully will become clear as we continue. A couple of additional points of note, this radio has 1100 memory channels and it's wide received for the higher bands at 108 megahertz through 999.98 megahertz, something along those lines. So it's fairly wide banded as, as far as your receiving capability for analog radio meaning this is an FM transceiver and wideband FM receiver. You are going to stick with FM. This does not feature a digital mode like Yaesu System Fusion or any other modes of operation other than frequency modulation. Something I forgot to mention is that this radio does support Bluetooth from the Yaesu Bluetooth headset where you can use other commercially available Bluetooth headsets. Not sure exactly which ones work, but just want to let you know it's a feature I don't often use, but you might, and now you know. So before we head over to the desktop and I show you the, the actual physical radio and kind of how it functions, why am I likely going to purchase this radio? Well, this radio does something that radios that are out on the market do not do except for a few Alinkos, mainly the Alinko DR135, which I have positively reviewed in the past, although that is a mono band 2 meter uh, radio. Alinko makes different models for the different bands, a 2 meter only, 220, 70 centimeter, and on from there, um, but they're mono band. This Yesu radio is dual band and wide receive, but it features a data port in the back. It features a nine pin Yesu DIN connector. So that means you can use something like a Cantronix TNC to do APRS and packet radio. Also, if you had an all-star node, you could go from your all-star node into the Yesu via that round DIN connector and be able to connect to it just like that. 
that is a big step in a different direction from its competitor being the 2730A. To me, this is just my use case, the FTM 6000 is gonna be great for doing packet radio and all-star and other stuff like that. Even though it doesn't have a digital mode tied in to it in the body, I don't really care about that because I'm gonna leverage the hardware that I have to do the different modes of operation that I'd like to do. Okay, let's go to the desktop and show you what this radio looks like, its power output capabilities are, and give you a better feel of how it operates. All right, let's have a little fun. Here is the box, the FTM 6000. I will show you what comes in the box. We're not gonna do a traditional unboxing because you know I'm not really a fan of those. Okay, so this is what the radio looks like when you get it out of the box and you connect the microphone to it. It has the mobile bracket connected right on the bottom of it, and it's actually a real nice mobile bracket. There's a little lever here, and that's what allows you to slide the bracket off. And this is this is a pretty good bracket. If you're thinking about a GoBox radio potentially and you want something simple, this might be a good option. And then it just locks into place like that. On the side here is a little button. That's what allows you to pop the head off. It has two wires, two flat ribbon wires. One is for the short head unit that connects directly to one is for connecting the head unit directly to the body. And then there's a much longer one that is for remoting this using the supplied mount that comes with the head unit. This, the only thing this is lacking is a longer wire for the microphone. And let me show you how that all comes together. Here's the head unit unplugged. So here's your head unit. And the microphone connects right next to it. There's a data port right there, which is for your normal programming and your updating. Keep in mind there are switches that usually you have to switch when you go through the Yesu process for updating firmware. There's a tiny little switch and it says normal and update. So keep that in mind. And that is again, the data port, it is a USB mini. Okay, to route the microphone cable, you push it into this little slot here. Then you come in with your head unit, click that into place. Okay, that's in. And then you seat it on this side, right here. There's a little, there's little tabs or tab holes. Seat it and then just rock it into place. And now you're locked into place. Backside where the money shot is, there's that data port, that beautiful data port that I'm excited to see. I'm glad that's there. And there is an external speaker port as well, as well as your coax connection right there for the antenna. This is a pretty slick DTMF mic, so you can use this if you are connected to a repeater that accepts DTMF tones to go ahead and key and then type in the tones you're doing. There is a mute button, which I, I like that uh, radios are coming with these mute buttons now. This is pretty handy. And there's up and down rockers for sliding through your memory channels or the frequencies you're on. All right, first test, we're gonna just do a simple power output. We're on 60 watts, we're going for power and we bury the needle at 60 watts. Let's do 200 and see what it shows. So just north of 50 actually for this on transmit. Just north of actually 60 even, so not bad. This is into a dummy load. Let's, let it, let's show you what it looks like when it's into a uh, proper two meter 70 centimeter antenna. Okay, two meter 70 centimeter antenna. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu for test. All right, back down to 60 watts. Let's do a test for output. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, test. Yep, so that's... Kilo November 6, Juliet Sierra Zulu. Copy your test, 059. Hey, thanks for that. That's on uh, Simplex out here too. So doing all right. Appreciate you coming back to me. KI6NAZ. Yeah, Simplex is, uh, my location is Lakewood. So I'm not sure where you're at, but uh, yeah, great signal. Uh, I'm in Cerritos. So yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're probably pretty close. All right, let's take a closer look at the FTM 6000. Pretty straightforward. The controls are very easy to manipulate and use. Okay, power buttons at the top, volume control, one of the programmable F buttons, the band button, which cycles through the various bands that this can cover for receive. In this case, we're gonna leave it on the 146, which is two meters. VM, if you had memory channels loaded, it would switch to memory channels or go back to VFO. All right, a lot of your controls are gonna be off of this DTMF mic, and you've got four buttons on the front, these P buttons, like a button to open the squelch. This moves you to your frequency channels or switches you back from VFO to your home which in this case is my 146.520. If you're on VFO and you hit P3, it starts scanning. And it says VFO scan. And while it's saying VFO scan, it's actively scanning VFO. Uh, you're, you're cutting yourself off at the 
I have this set to a five second wait before it starts to resume scanning. And it will pick up on noisy stations like this. It's scanning in the background now. So it's going way up past uh, the two meter band now. It's just gonna scan through everything. It's gonna find digital, it'll stop there. That's obviously digital. And if you click mute, it just mutes the, uh, the active frequency right away, which is pretty nice. That's great for when you're on a repeater like the, what is that, 435? Yeah, 435. There's a good button for that. Uh, okay, so you hit P4, and it brings up the weather radio for you. So you can listen, and you can go back to what you were doing over there. So one of the interesting things this radio talks about is this easy use mode with the menu. So if we click menu, this will give us a couple of options. 30 gives you power, and then it jumps right to 20 for repeater settings. 19 for the reverse of the repeater, 12 for your home station, and then that's where it tops out. That's the single click on the menu. That's actually pretty nice because then it just gives you the controls you need. If you hold down the F menu button, which gives you the expanded menu or what we like to call the deep F menu, that's where you get the full access to the repeat or the radio controls. And you can go up the list through all the different options. I highly recommend if you're going to be buying a radio that you always go ahead and download the menu and look at the menu options before you even buy it, just so you know exactly what you're getting into. Like there's your mic gain. And if you wanna use your pager, which you know, that's a setting that not a lot of people use. And there you get things like step, timeout timer, display of your voltage. Hey, look at that, 13.9, pretty close. Let's go back down here. I wanna, I'm looking for packet, where's my packet? Packet is actually up here on 16. And there you can set your baud rate, usually 1200. So here are my thoughts on the Yaesu FTM 6000. It is a right up front more expensive radio than its competitors, but when you factor in what comes in the box, all of a sudden the price is not that far away from, again, its competition. Being that it is a dual band radio and wide band receive, I find it interesting that there isn't really an A and a B channel. I am a person that likes to have the A and the B channel visible right up front, and that's why I really do like the ICOM 2730. But the star of the show on this radio is that data port in the back of the radio. Now, for those of you that remember a radio, Yes used to make it, an FTM 100. Some have uh, thought that maybe this was a spiritual successor to the FTM 100. It is not. This radio is discontinued now and largely has been replaced with the FTM 300, which is currently on the market now. I will mention why people can thought or were wondering if the uh, FTM 6000 is the spiritual successor to the FTM 100 is because they both have a similar look and feel and control of a single channel view. The difference is the FTM 100 can run Yaesu System Fusion, whereas the FTM 6000 cannot. And just to throw a little spice onto this whole thing, there is an FTM 100 on eBay right now for $587. So Keep in mind, even at its retail price of FTM, with the FTM 6000 being $319, that's still better than a used FTM 100 that's off of eBay. If the FTM 6000 is doing what you're doing, which is analog digital con connection to some kind of computing device for APRS or Packet or All Star, or if you are going to be doing something like just a simple radio that maybe goes in a go box, or maybe you just don't want all those thrills and you just want to do FM, analog, simplex, and repeater work. Well, this isn't a hard and fast review because I've only been using this radio for about a week uh, when I picked it up at the end of October. I do want to give a note that even after I spend time with this radio, which again, I'm likely gonna buy it for the uh, functionality of being able to do things like all-star for this all-star note I have around here somewhere. Listen very clearly. This is going to have a small uh, er appeal for uh, for hams that are in the mobile space. It is a basic mobile radio. It will do all the FM things you want to do. Repeater, simplex. Again, I'm repeating myself a bit, but if that's kind of what you are about and what you do, it's a good radio. It's got a very loud speaker. It has a DTMF handheld microphone that you can use. 
it's very straightforward to use when you're actually driving around. I've been playing around with the menu system. That easy mode menu system is actually really nice. But for everybody that wants to interface their radio with a computer or something like that to do again, APRS, All Star and all that stuff, you're gonna like this radio. This, is, this radio was, I feel like it was potentially designed for this crowd and I think it's the one you might wanna take a look at. Well, those are just my thoughts on the Yaesu FTM 6000. Please tell me in the comments below what you think about the radio. And if you enjoyed this, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm and tells YouTube to put this video, among all my other videos, in front of new hams or those who are looking for new and interesting things in this space. If you have not already, please subscribe. I am Josh, KI6NAZ, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. illegal place where they have pre-staged a bunch of shot up dead nurses or something that they've staged? Yeah, you've just been set up, okay? So that's how that works. Don't get caught up in that. Stay on public property, stay legal in terms of where you go and what you do and what you have with you. So again, no weapons, all right? I don't want you to have swords and nunchucks either. I don't want you to have brass knuckles. <laughs> like. I'm even talking about all your exotic weapons. All you have your secret belt buckle knives and everything. Leave all that crap at home. Go get yourself some self-defense training. Train in Krav Maga or train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. A little BJJ training do you some good. I've done, you know, many years of Krav training and other kinds of martial arts training. Can I do it on you now? Like, I want to make sure I understand this. So, <laughs> so he let me do it on him. Of course, his neck is built like a tree trunk, so, you know, it's not the same thing. He's got, he's got like, the neck of a beast because he's been doing this for so many decades. Like, his neck is impervious to chokes. But mine is not. <laughs> In any case, look, all this training is valuable. But I always have a great time with these uh, self-defense instructors because they get to teach me stuff they normally don't teach, you know, because they know who I am and they know my background and they, they, they can see the way I move and I'm very, very... Uh, experienced in uh, fighting and self-defense and so on, and, and they're like, okay, so you're not here to win medals, right? Like, you're not here for competition. You're not going to go in and just do competitive, you know, BJJ and, and, yeah, not at all. You know who I am. You know what I do. So they just pull out all the stops, and it's like, it's the most gnarly stuff that you could possibly imagine. Be martial arts. No, the real cop... It's extremely violent. It is extremely violent. And nobody says, don't mess with fit-looking young Israeli men who look like they want to... Training, you can do a He's job still going. He's still going. Let the repeater go, man. My dude. Uh, one more thought. Uh, years ago, I took part at first in training and then... This is Gecko 45. women out there kind of a collapse or something. Or uprising, oh, no uh, wonder. This is W six N U T. Well, you could then use the satellite phones to still have communication. So check it out at sat one two three dot com. That's the website to go to. That's the satellite phone store. <laughs> <laughs>